business to this nation. We come here today, rescue us. Rescue us from this powerful enemy. We are not allowing wickedness in the next election. We want a righteous president, Lord, to lead our nation. I want you to come before the Lord and present our case before God and say, Lord, for 26 years we've been praying. For 26 years many have gone, Lord, running for the seats in Congress, Lord, seats in Senate, even in presidency, Lord, but without any result. And so we come into the highest court of heaven. And Lord, we say, Lord, you're going to deal with our nation according to righteousness. According to the cleanness of our hands, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let us come to God today and let us ask the Lord to bring forth a generation, a new generation of men and women who have clean hands and a pure heart. We are going to stand before the Lord with the name of the Lord in their hearts, the name which is character. So therefore, let the guilty be turned to God today. Let the guilty be judged today in the name of Jesus. Oh God, thank you so much. Lord, thank you that when, when we know that you have cleansed this nation, when we represent this nation, Lord, in all of its sinfulness, in all of its wickedness, God, you are a God that we can, we can really trust. Because you said in your word, you are blameless to those who have come to self from blame. You are the reward, Lord, of those who are working according to righteousness. To those who are working in the cleanness of their hands, Raise today, right now, Lord. Make it clear for us, Lord. Who are the people that we will have to go, Lord, with clean hands and pure heart, O oh God. Lord, you said you will be faithful to show yourself faithful in the coming election. Lord, you said you will be pure to those who will be pure. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare righteousness will reign in this nation, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Notice that the, our the the 
the gathering has some changes like we've invited several people who are very relevant to the needs of the times and uh, you'll also notice that uh, uh, our sister Melinda Sweet is part of the worship team first time yan nangyari no? well we, we I noticed too that the speakers are bringing their wives I think in case of a rapture, they will be with their wife. <laughs> but I'd like to uh, bring to the stage our dear prophet, Neville Johnson, and the wife, and also Sister Melinda. Please, please, we would like to ask Sister Melinda okay, to give us a greetings today. Can we come? <laughs> Pastor Neville, can you come? Yes, the gentleman, the gentleman will bring the two ladies here. So the two ladies will give a welcome to all of us today. You all look gorgeous. <laughs> it's so good to be here amongst you. And what a privilege that we have that we have brought heaven to earth in our meetings. Just a touch of heaven. Just a touch of heaven has come down, hasn't it, while we've been here. Amen. And there is a wonderful man who penned this uh, a hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. My great Redeemer's praise. And here we've got 10,000. And it's just so amazing. He would have loved to have been to see 1,000. But look what we've got. 10,000 wonderful people praising God. The Bible says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. And I believe that as we praise him, we bring down heaven to earth. It's just been so wonderful. I've just felt the Lord came and he's visiting us here and we've had such a feast, haven't we, of the word of God. It's just been so wonderful. And I believe that as we go to our homes, we must take... The, the presence of God with us because the Lord wants our homes to represent him in, uh, in heaven. It says that we are representatives of our God and he wants us in our homes to make a place that um, represents him and his love to us. Now, I just felt that they were going to ask me to say something um, and I just prayed about it and the Lord said, you know, they're going to have such a lot of wonderful food here this time, but I want you to tell them to just take one thing at a time, make a list and just pick out one thing at a time and pray and work through that. And I just want to say that on a practical level because there's nothing I can add to what the men of God have said but he wants us to work that through our lives but one step at a time. Don't try and put everything to, and do it all at once. We can't. I can't. Neville can't. None of us can. We've got to take one step at a time and take that truth that God's spoken to you about and just work it through. And I want to thank you now for having us and the privilege it's been worshipping God with you. Thank you. Okay. Hello, Philippines. We love you. Thank you for having us. We love you so much. I just want to encourage you. We are on an amazing, amazing journey. We trip and fall sometimes. We catch ourselves and stand back up. And we go a couple more feet and we fall. But God is with us. 
And his word promises us he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He is with us always, even to the very end. He is here to empower us to make it. And I was reminded today while they were teaching, I loved hearing Bruce Allen. It was wonderful. That's the first time I've heard him. Uh, it was such a gift. But I was reminded in Genesis how the scripture says God created things after their own kind. But when he came to man, I wasn't created after my mother and father. I was created after God alone. I was created in his very image. And that's what I have to remember every day. When I, when I think, oh God, I need to discern better. And I have to think, but God, you discern everything. When I, when I don't feel like I have the power to cast out the demons that I'm facing, I have to remember that I was created in the image of God, not man. God has all authority and all power, and he is who lives on the inside of me. We are overcomers, and we're going to win. We overcome because we choose to obey the word of God and run with him. God bless you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so privileged to have with us Pastor Neville Johnson. Shall we all stand? Shall we honor the man of God? Thank you, brother. Thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, the Lord is here tonight. He's here to speak to us, give us understanding, insight, revelation. Hallelujah. You know, and uh, young Kippur this year, I got up early in the morning, and uh, when I walked down to the lounge room, the Lord was standing there, but he was looking intently as if he was looking right across the world intently. He had this focus. He was looking, you know, you know, sometimes you see a dog and it sees something in the distance and it's just focusing. It was like that. And um, after a while I said, Lord, what are you seeing? What are you looking at? And when I said that, I became aware of four angels on the four one on the four corners of the earth. And these were very large, very large angels on the four corners of the earth. And I thought, wow. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, there are four winds. The wind, four winds, great winds blowing. And I looked at these angels then it came to me very clearly, four winds blowing, winds of adversity, winds of judgment, winds of natural upheaval and anarchy, dark winds were blowing. These were not God's angels. They were very, very, very large, powerful, angelic uh, angels on the four corners of the earth blowing. Then it continued on, dark winds blowing over Europe. Nations in crisis, nations rebelling against mankind, conspiracies, hidden things coming to light, exposures. Europe would be a haven for the Antichrist. I then became aware of another wind that was blowing. But this time there were kingdom winds and this wind was blowing from heaven. And I actually could feel the wind. And when I began to feel the wind, this is what I heard. A mighty wind blowing from heaven. A jubilee wind. A restoring wind. An empowering wind. A mighty release on many fronts. Winds of death and winds of life. When I said winds of death, I saw many Christians being taken home in the next 12 months to two years. Many, many Christians taken home. Then I heard a reduction, yet an increase. 
favor, great favor, restoration, reformation. Then I heard, this is not a revival, it is a reformation. Millions upon millions entering the kingdom. Then I saw two armies. One was from the angels in heaven. The other were God's people who had gone through a purification process. These two armies worked together, tearing down the works of the devil, healing, raising the dead, doing great exploits, exploits which had not been seen before. And the Lord looked at me intently and he said, it begins. And with that, the whole scene changed, the Lord disappeared. And I thought, I must remember to write this down. I said to the Lord, Lord, help me to remember all of this you've just said to me. This is where we are right now. It begins. We're at that point in time when it is a massive change is taking place in the earth. A change like there's never been a change like this before. And uh, this point in history... The whole of heaven is excited about it. The whole of heaven is looking on. The whole of heaven is excited about it. You know, and, and we need to be excited about this. The greatest move of God that has ever been seen is on our doorstep. It's right here. It begins now. And so I was thinking about this. Now I want to share some thoughts with you on Psalm 91. You know? Psalm 91 is a very interesting psalm because it speaks of the day and age in which we are living. And um, I will read it to you. Most of you will be familiar with this, but I'll read it to you anyway because we need to understand it. All right. Psalm 91. It begins with... He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, He is my fortress, my God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers. And under his wings you will take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You will not be afraid of the terror that flieth by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. You know, we've seen a lot of t um, terrors, bombing raids all over the world. He says, You shall not be afraid nor for the arrow, missiles that fly. A thousand, listen to me, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Now, only with your eyes shall you see this. See, people say, there was a lot of teaching that before anything gets bad we're going to be raptured God says only with your eyes will you see it. you'll be there you'll see it long before the rapture takes place only with your eyes will you see these things a thousand fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand we'll see it on television we'll see it around the world no evil shall be for you nor any plague come near your dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways. That's their hand, and they keep you in all your ways. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you, you dash your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion, the cobra, the young lion, the serpent. You shall tremble underfoot because God has set his love upon you and will deliver you. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. He will be with you in trouble. 
and deliver you and honor you and with long life will he satisfy you. This is a, a psalm for these last days. There is a place of refuge. It is thought now that ISIS has in their hands germ warfare, uh, modified plagues which we have no remedy for, which can be delivered in many, many ways. We're living in this kind of a world. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under a covering. He will stay of the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress, and in him will I trust. Okay, that word dwelleth in the Hebrew is, means to remain. If you remain, remain. And it's a number of years ago, I, the Lord showed me a dome, a huge dome. And I said, Lord, you know, what is this? What are you showing me? It was a, a dome was as big as this auditorium. And it was a very high, transparent dome. And there were people inside. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, this is the secret place of the Most High. And I thought, oh, this, that's good. And then I was watching this. People would come up and they couldn't get in. They couldn't get in. Other people would come up and would walk straight into it and then they were on the other side. Demons would come up and try to get in but they couldn't penetrate. And I thought, well, wow. <laughs> this is something. See, there is a place of protection in the Lord. In the days that lie ahead, he that abides stays in this covering, the secret place, hiding place. He shall say, you know, unto the Lord, the Lord is my trust, and in him do I put my trust. Now, he that remains. The question is, what is the secret place, and how do we get into it? The secret place equates with the third compartment in the tabernacle of Moses. It is also another place, but well, let's look at that at first. Now, you know, the tabernacle of Moses had an outer court, right? A large area that wasn't covered, that outer court and they had the altar, the burnt offerings in the outer court, they had the laver, and uh, that was the outer court. The holy place was a covered place. It wasn't open to the elements, it was covered. And there was a candlestick on the left, a showbread on the right, and further down there was the altar of incense. And it speaks of Pentecost the holy place. But then there was the holiest of all. Now, that wasn't only the high priest once a year could get into that place. Now, right now, you and I here are in the holy place. You've moved on from the outer court. When you were born again and, and water baptized, there was a laver there for washing. You were in the outer court. You were saved. You are baptized in water. And that's spiritually where you were. Until you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Right? Then you moved into another place. The holy place candlestick on the left gave insight, revelation, more understanding. The bread of his presence was on the right. There was an altar of incense at the other end. And we've been dwelling there. We've been operating from there. We've been ministering from there. That's where we have been. But it's time to move on. 
It's time to move on into the place, the ho most holiest of all. Right now, we're in the holy place, but it's time to move on into the secret place. Only the high priest once a year could get in there. But God is going to, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was rent, right? That was when he died upon the cross. Now we have got to find our way in there. And it is a progression. And so we're here on the Feast of Tabernacles. And it's time to move into a new level of our walk with God. A new level of the presence of God. The Feast of Tabernacles is where we go now. The way has opened for us. Let me say this as gently as I can. If you do not move on to this next phase, you will not survive what is coming. Listen to me seriously. We have to move on. There's another place which God wants you to move into. He has made it possible for you to move into. It's a place of safety. It's a place of shelter. The prophet Isaiah spoke about this in Isaiah chapter 26 and uh, verse 20 and 21. He said, Come, my people, and enter into your chambers and shut the doors about you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until... This indignation has passed. For behold, the Lord is coming out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. There is a place. It said, come my people and enter into your chambers. Shut the door and hide yourself for a while. That does not mean that we're not active in this world. It means personally who we walk in in the secret place of the Most High under the covering of the Lord. Germ warfare is going to become one of the greatest problems in the future that the world has ever seen. But it said, it shall not come near you. You see, and we're not fully there yet, but we're moving there. When your spirit becomes larger than your body, no germ can pass through to your physical body. Hits your spirit and dies instantly. We call this, you know, a lot of New Age people call this your aura. It's what's emanating from you. Cannot get through that. Now, this is, there is a place, you see, in God. The secret place of the Most High. Now, you must have a heart for this. You must pursue it diligently. You need to ask and seek and knock and knock and seek and ask and not give up until you start moving into it. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight because it connects with this about, you know, the omnipresence of God. I had a conversation with Enoch about this, the omnipresence of God. And I didn't realize how important it was until he began to speak to me about this. And we need to understand this. It's very important. God is omnipresent. And it's really important that you understand this and that you know really what it means. The very universe cannot contain the Lord. His whole being fills every part of the universe. He is present, listen to me, he's present everywhere at the same time. He can be present with me in Australia and he can be present with you here. He could be present with you if, if you were on the moon. 
He fills the whole universe. He never goes and comes. He's always there. He is not diffused throughout the universe, but he is present at every point in his fullness. Now, it's really important. I, I, I'm trying my best to get this across to you. David said, you know, in 1 Kings 8.27, it says, but, but will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold the heaven, and the heavens of heaven cannot contain him. How much less this house that I have built it. Solomon, David was saying that. Isaiah 66.1, Thus saith the Lord God, The heaven is my throne, the earth is my footstool. David said this in Psalm 139, verse 7 and 8, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or whether shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the earth, I am there. Even there your hand shall lead me. And you will listen to me and your right hand shall hold me. Now, David is saying, there is no place on earth I can go where you are not there. In his fullness, he is there. Now, it's very clear. God does not go and come. You go and come. He is always there. He never leaves you. You leave him. You getting this? He said, I will never leave you even to the ends of this age. Okay? Why did he say this age? Because he knew what the conditions would be. He doesn't leave. You leave. You know, we say, God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? He's right there. He never goes. He never leaves. He is saying, where are you? He's always with you. Now this is really, really important. Break things get bad in the days to come. You need to know the Lord is right with you. You can connect instantly and know what to do. That's really important that you understand this. And that you know this. It's ingrained within you. No matter what your circumstances, situation is, you can contact him instantly. And he can tell you what to do. You see... Faith is a part of this. You know, faith is important and it's a part of this. We must believe that he is always with us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He's always there. Never mind what is going on around us. He never changes. He never moves away from you. He is omnipresent, which simply means he is always present. He doesn't go and come. You know, sometimes we get into a means, say, oh Lord, come, come Lord Jesus. He's saying, I'm here. I never leave you. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm still here. It's not come Lord, it's for us to access him. And how do how we do that? He said, yeah, I'll be in you, but I'll also be with you. The two different things. Hebrews 13, 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content of the things which, which you have. For he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Because of this, he said... I will then, so I will boldly say, the Lord is my helper, one, and I will not fear what man can do to me. Are you getting this? I will never leave you, nor forsake you. So
so you can boldly say the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what any man can do to me because the Lord is with me Jesus said when they reach the end of the world our day and age I will be with you now let me say something if you believe that it is so for you if you don't believe it it's not so for you it's not real for you now only what you know to be truth and believe is real to you the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6 you know it says but without faith it is impossible to please God Wow without faith it's impossible to please God so he goes on to say so he that comes to God must believe that he is in other words he is there if you're going to come to God you must believe that he's there right there with you he's not somewhere out there you're not trying to call him down or bring him up he that comes to God if but without faith it's impossible to please him but if when we come to God we must believe that he is there and secondly that he is a rewarder of those who connect with him how the omnipresence of God is a great mystery you know how can God be in every point of the universe in his fullness that's why it requires faith to believe now sometimes we feel his presence right sometimes we don't but nothing has changed with God it just changed with you he hasn't moved you have moved either in your thinking your awareness your thoughts you've moved away so we come back and you set our mind and heart upon the Lord and his reality is there again he never moves we do he said I'll be with you to the ends of the age oh we cannot please God without faith so if we're going to come to him we have to believe that he is there right there at that point in time he loves us he's eager to talk with us he said I never leave I'm always there this must become such a reality an ingrained reality in our life you know omnipresence is the key to us walking with God understanding omnipresence is the key to us walking with God and you know omnipresence the omnipresence of God is the foundation for our relationship with him so once we believe this we must learn how to access him God is a spirit right they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth now because he is a spirit it's difficult to become friends with an unseen spirit right somebody you can't see it's difficult to become friends with but there's a part of you that can see that is your spirit you know this is not prophetic all right but if you died tonight and I said it's not prophetic <laughs> if you died tonight your spirit would come out of your body you know and probably say what a relief <laughs> comes out your spirit would see everything that's going on in the spirit realm that's a spirit however you catch your spirit and pop it back in and you can't see anything because we work from a natural mind instead of from a spiritual dimension that there is a bridge between your spirit and the mind 
There is a bridge between the two realms of the physical and the spiritual, and that is the realm of imagination. I've told you this before, but let's quickly visit it again. God, with his imagination, created this world. And God gave you imagination for what reason? So, you can imagine. Everything, every invention ever made on this face of the earth first came through the imagination of someone. Now, imagination can be used for good or bad. We have a screen on the inside. You can project onto that screen, right? Call that imagination. The Holy Spirit can project onto that screen. And the devil can project onto that screen. <laughs> it's one screen. It's called imagination. <laughs> That's why our mind has to be really clean so that it doesn't unruly cast pictures onto our screen of our imagination. That's why we need to be renewed in our mind. What's clean, what's as pure, what's upright, what's as good, what's gentle, all of those things. But that kind of mind, the mind of Christ. So, it is difficult to have a friend who is invisible. So we've got to cross that barrier and move on from that. The key of this, listen to me, there's a key to this whole thing. The key to this is faith. He that comes to God must believe that he is there. First one. Must believe. And he's a rewarder of you coming. So you must believe that he is there never leaves then you must learn how to become aware of him access him become aware of him do you believe the Lord is with me here he is standing on the platform tonight can you see him why okay if I said to you the Lord is standing right on my left side here, right? Close your eyes. Look at the Lord right next to me. Doesn't matter what, what, you, what your image of him, look at him next to me. Okay, open your eyes again. You say, well, that's only my imagination. That's just my imagination. You know, so ever since we were brought up in church, we thought you've got to deny your imagination. Just, but <laughs> let me say this to you. It's really hard to grasp. Only what you are aware of is real to you. Only what you are aware of is real to you. Now, if I stand over here and the Lord is standing next to me and you, become, you are aware of that, then it's real to you. You can do this in your home. You can do this anytime, no matter where you are. He said he'd never leave you, so he is there. You've just focused the bridge from your spirit to your physical senses or, or the, your, your awareness. Only what you are aware of is real to you. You see, this auditorium, you're aware of it, right? And it's real. But if you go down the road and you're way somewhere else, you're not aware of this, so it's not real to you anymore. I'm trying to teach you some things 
that took me a long time to learn and with a lot of instructions from <laughs> how, how to walk God is a spirit he is unseen to the natural eyes generally speaking the next level is to see him with your eyes open but uh, with beyond the imagination but this is where you start focus he never leaves you so focus on him what you are aware of is actually real you say well it's just my imagination look Jesus said he that looketh on a woman to lust after her has already committed that deed in other words Jesus said your imagination is real he considered it as reality and you're accountable for it now isn't that scary he said you've already done it you've already committed it It wasn't physical but was in the imagination and he said you're guilty imagination is real Hebrews 11 it is impossible at verse 6 but without faith is it impossible to please God for he that comes to him must believe that he is there and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him that's why Paul said 2 Corinthians 4.18 why we look not on the things which are seen but we look at the things which are not seen for those things which we can see with our physical eyes are temporal but those things which we don't see with our physical eyes are real hey those things which you don't see with your physical eyes are real this is what Paul said that the things which are not seen are eternal Paul is saying we can look into the unseen realm now now Hebrews 11 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen yeah it's, it's, I studied this verse for years faith produces substance faith produces reality faith is a substance once you believe something is real for you and you believe it it is real for you let me just make a simple statement faith creates reality faith creates reality if you believe it creates the reality in our physical realm faith is the substance the Greek word is for substance is hypostasis it means the foundation of the physical world foundations of the physical world evidence it's the evidence of things we can't see with our physical eyes see faith is part of the nature of God you know Colossians 1 17 and he is before all things and by him everything continues to exist okay now it's important you get you've got what I've said the Lord is present close your eyes and you'll see him if you practice that it'll become second nature to him you don't even think about it it's just there so once you've got that you've got that and you understand that and you've got that and you've got some clarity on that the second level is when we connect with the Lord by faith how can I put this you connect with his realm okay when you connect with the Lord you connect with his realm which becomes accessible to us 
I know it's hard to understand some of this, but I would really pray that the Holy Spirit would give you understanding. When you connect with the Lord, you connect with his realm. He said, he said, I, he said I am the door. He is a door to his realm. Every morning, I get up, I come down to my la the lounge where I am, I, I make sure my heart is right, my heart is clean, I go through those things. I connect with the Lord and his realm will open up to me. There is door, he is the door to his realm, but first you have to connect with him. Do you understand what I'm saying? You say, oh, I wish the Lord could take me to heaven. He is the door. You can't go there without connecting with the door, his realm. In fact, it's very dangerous. <laughs> you connect with the Lord first before you go there. He is the door. Let me say something to you. Oh, Lord, help me. He is bigger on the inside than he is on the outside. When you connect with him, you connect with the whole realms of God. And there are many realms in God. There are many, many realms. You connect with the door. He is the door. If you believe. Faith in the omnipresence of God opens this up to you. He's always there. When you connect with him, you connect with his realm. Now you can do this. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. You can do it. If you practice it and practice it, it becomes more real and more real and more real to you until you start to walk in it. I tell you. Yeah, he said, behold, Revelation 3, 10, 20, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open the door... He's always knocking. He's always wanting to connect with you. Always. And he knocks in many different ways, but he's always wanting to connect. You're his children. You always want to connect with your children, right? It's no different with God. He knocks and knocks and knocks and knocks and we ignore it. You know, children are better at this than adults are. Because they haven't got the mindset yet, you know, of what's logical and what is not. He's always knocking. Now our faith, obviously, must be based in the Word of God. Now listen, becoming God-conscious opens up his realms to you. It might not happen just immediately. The more you become conscious of the Lord, the more that his realms open up to you. And it's really, really important that you understand this. You only say, oh, these men of God walk in this and they see the Lord and they do these things. I am no different to you. I've just learned a little bit more. That's all. You say, oh, well, that's your calling. No. It's my relationship, which you have the same right to have with the Lord. And so, we need to understand it. You have to foster awareness. You have to work at it. You say, oh, if only I could see God. If only I could see God. You can see the Lord. Shut your eyes and connect with him. He never leaves you. He's always there. 
It doesn't come and go. Now, fostering awareness. Let me say this to you. Fostering awareness is really important. You must include the Lord in everything you are doing. Oh, it, it's, that sounds really good, but it's really hard to do because you can get through the day without even thinking about it. You must include the Lord in everything you do through the day. This develops awareness. Talk to him about what you're doing. You see? If you talk to the Lord about what you're doing, whether you're washing dishes, you're cooking a meal, fixing the car. I talk to the Lord about cars a lot because I love cars. I love good technology. So does he. You've got some incredible cars in heaven. Anyway, and they don't make a sound. Include him in everything you do from the minute you get up to the end of the day. Talk to him about what you were doing. Say, what do you think about this? You say, well, he never answers me. He will eventually pursue awareness. The more that you pursue awareness, the more that you pursue awareness, just hang on a minute. Father, I take authority over that witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Break it! Break it! Break it in the name of Jesus! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Yes, praise God. You have to foster awareness. Include him in your life. This is one thing Enoch taught me. He said, if you include the Lord in what you are doing, he will include you in what he is doing. You got that? It works both ways. If you include the Lord in what you are doing, he'll start to include you in what he is doing. See? That's how it works. If you draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. You make the first step. And that these are important to fostering awareness. You must include them in your day. Draw near to God. And he said, I will draw near to him. You, Hebrews 10 verse 22. Let us draw near with a true heart, full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our body washed with pure water. We move close. We make the first move. Very rarely does God sudden, the Lord suddenly appear to it. Sometimes there are sovereign experiences. But that's not how we walk with God. They're occasional. It's our daily walk with him that counts. It's the friendship relationship that he is after with us. And you say, I'm not worthy of this. No, you're not. None of us are. But he wants you as his friend. You're his children. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to include him in what you're doing. You need to come into that awareness, you know? And so, having a draw near with a heart, a full assurance of faith, having a heart sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, I get up in the morning, I come down on my own, Joe has her own relationship and this, this is just what I do. I get up before her and so that's just how we work it because we've got to be quiet with the Lord. I go down to the lounge 
And I just pray. I ask the Lord to renew my mind, cleanse it. Because all kinds of stuff from the day before lodges in your mind, you know, clogs it up. Cleanse, renew my mind. I ask the Lord to purify my heart, cleanse my heart, our motives, what drives us, our motives, pure heart, clean hands, our relationship with other people, we need clean hands, you see, and a pure heart, and this is really, really important, and it says, you know, if we come to God, clean heart, it's a process. Let us draw near with a true heart, a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. So, and so, a clean heart, clear conscience. In other words, we approach the Lord first with pure heart. He that comes to God, pure heart. Then we must believe that he is always there, he is omnipresent, and so we sit there, we focus on the Lord, and we connect with him. Simple as that. Now, if you will do that and make it a pattern in your life, constant pattern in your life, things will get clearer and clearer and clearer and clearer. It will become more simple, more easy. Your realms will open up to the realms of angels and um, you'll just begin to interact with that realm. You were built to be able to interact with that realm. You don't just have a soul and a body, you have a spirit. And you can interact with the spirit realm. <sighs> he that comes to God must believe that he is there and that he is going to reward you for coming. That's the Bible. That's it. You know, 2015 opened up, ushered in a new era, whereby we're never going to be the same again. Something has changed in the atmosphere. Something has changed all around us. And it will continue to change. And, um, you know, sowing and reaping is being... The turnaround in sowing and reaping is being rapidly increased. And this is both scary and it's both wonderful. And we need to be aware of that moving into this new realm now, this new year, this year of a change. Everything is speeding up. There's an acceleration of things in the realm of the spirit. And what you sow is going to return really quickly. Where sometimes in the past, you know, what we saw took months or even years to return. That's gone. If so, this is the most wonderful thing, but it's the most frightening thing. What we saw, good or bad, is going to come back to us real quick. And so it said, you know, of the children of Issachar, in First Corinthians, Corinthians, First Chronicles 12, 32, the children of Issachar, which men had understanding of the times, and to know what Israel should do. For us to know the times and the seasons is critical. Just knowing that the time and the season can release the grace of God for you to help move into it, just knowing that, you know, most of the church today, a huge swath of the church today is not aware of what's going on, not aware of the season we are entering into. And this is sad, you know, they're just not aware of it. This year, 
You can write one thing across this year, change for good and evil. Both. The world will never be the same again. By the time we get into 2016, things will be so different. And we have a window of opportunity to learn how to move in God there's great grace being released today to help you do this. If you, this is really what you want and you knock and you ask and you seek and you refuse, you refuse that, that this, this is going to happen. You refuse anything else, but this is going to happen to me. I'm going to move on. The grace is there now, like never before. But you have a responsibility. You see, you have to do some things. You must play your part. Let me just say some things. People will, many will start to die over the next two years like never before. I'm talking about Christians and sometimes leaders. Because change is in the air. Billy Graham will die. And that's not a bad thing because his mantle will become available coupled with the Feast of Tabernacles. Can you imagine that? The integrity of Billy Graham and the power of the Holy Ghost? Wow. Now, a lot are going to be taken home because one season is ending. And that's okay. That's okay. You know? There's, you know, people say, oh, I'll die. What if I die? What if, you know, what if my Aunt Maisie dies? Oh, I don't want people to die. Look, they're stepping into a world which is a lot better than this world. Come on. We shouldn't mourn over deaths. We should have a celebration. Christians I'm talking about. You know? Oh, so there will be deaths because a season has come to an end, you know, and it's like people grow old. I'm not ready to go just yet. I mean, I'm, I might be 75, but I'm not ready to go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've waited all my life for this time. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be denied now. <laughs> and so, you know, <sighs> God is omnipresent. You know, the unseen realm, the realm which we can't see with our eyes, was the first reality. Before this physical world and universe, physically was brought into being, there was another world. And it existed with spirits and angels, which God ran a vast kingdom. And God said, we're going to create a physical world. That spiritual realm created the physical realm, not the other way around. Now, it's important to understand this. That is the real world. And because that realm created this realm, it has dominance and, and control over this realm. Now, so the spiritual realm is the main realm. It is more real than this. Heaven is more real than this. What time do I have to go to? I'm losing track of time. Have you got time? <laughs> okay. You know, this is a Kairos time. It really is. You know, it was said the children of Israel, the, is the Jews, they look for their Messiah. The whole hope was their Messiah. The whole of their thrust was the coming Messiah. And when he came, they didn't recognize him. Isn't that incredible? And they missed, Jesus said, they missed the day of their opportunity. We don't want to miss our day of opportunity. 
Jesus looked over Jerusalem and he wept. He said, oh God. He could see the temple being pulled down. He could see the Jews, many of the Jews being crucified. He could see what was coming and he said, because of this, the day of their visitation, all of this came upon them. This is the day of our visitation. There is a secret. I don't know what time I'm supposed to finish, but anyway, I'll go on. At the end of the holy place was an altar of incense, right? This is the holy place, not the holiest of all, and it blocked the way from getting into the holy place. Or least of all. So there was a barrier. Candlestick on this side. Table of showbread on that side. The altar of incense there. But behind the altar of incense was a veil. And you could not get into the holy place until you passed the altar of incense. Uh, it's interesting you know, because incense, we understand incense as prayers, right? Intercession, and it is that, but it's much, much more than that. Much, much more than that. You see, how can I put this? In the third compartment, we're trying to get into the third compartment, right? The manifest presence of God, where the Ark of the Covenant is, and where all of these things are. But, there is a key, a combination, of getting past the altar of incense, and getting into the holy place. Holiest of all, rather. There's a key. Now, that key is very, very interesting, you know, because it's like incense has a smell, right? That's what incense is about. It smells, you know, it's a nice smell. So we come, the altar of incense is there. The high priest would put something on the incense and it would come up. The smell would fill the place. Then he could go through and enter in. Now, there's a combination here. You see, every attribute of God, love, joy, peace, gentleness, long-suffering, gives off a smell. If you're in the realm of the Spirit, you can actually smell that smell. What a person is gives off an odor. We see this all the way through the Bible. You know, the Bible t talks about sacrifice as a sweet-smelling odor. You see? Now, love gives off a sound, but it gives off a smell, and it gives off a color. These are the realm of the spirit. Gentleness gives off a smell, gives off a sound, gives off a color. And these things are really important that we need to understand this. All right, we must be quick uh, and then continue with this. <laughs> The thing is, we're all, we're, most of us, only all of us here, are in the holy place, right? Now we want to get into the holiest of all, the manifest presence of God. But there's an altar of incense stands in the way, blocks it. And it's not until you give off the right smell will that open up to you. When we talk about smell, we, it's interesting in scripture, there's a lot of it, we don't have time for it now, but a lot of it, love gives off a smell, pleasing to God. Gentleness gives off a smell, 
Bible talks about it very plainly. Smell goes up to God. Long suffering gives off a smell. Gentleness, long suffering, peace gives off a smell. Gives off a color and a sound. And when you have the combination right, which is a pure heart, we are walking in the nature of the Lord himself. And it's nature like Dr. Bruce was saying in the last message, how important that was. That was a great message. It's not what we do, it's who we are that counts. We come before that altar, but we are not going to get into that holiest of all until we smell right. And that means the character and the nature of Jesus must be present when we stand before that altar. That is the combination that opens the door. And the reason that that is safety, there is safety in that, because once you get into the holiest of all, a whole lot of other stuff opens up with which you would not, you would abuse if you don't have the nature of Jesus. So he said, I'm going to guard this area. You've got to have the right combination or it's not going to open. Who are you? See, who are you? God is love. God is peace. God is gentleness. God is kindness. God is long-suffering. Who are you? We're not talking about gifts. We're talking about the powers of the age to come which are behind that veil. But you have to qualify. We come before God in praying and seeking God and intercession with words but also what is coming out of us must smell right. If it doesn't, the door will not open. You with me? It's who you are now that counts, not what you do. How much you become like the Lord gives off an odor, a smell, a color, it sounds. And that combination opens the door for you to enter in. That's where we are. And so, right on the point of change, but God requires holiness. God requires that we become like Jesus in order for us to go further. And there's no way into this next phase, no way in, unless your character becomes like the Lord and gives out off the right combination to open that door. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, I thank you for your people here tonight. They are hungry, Lord. They are hungry. They are thirsty for you. Lord, open their understanding to such a degree, Lord, that the revelation might bring change in them. Through revelation and understanding, change occurs in Jesus' name. Let me just give you one more point here because the Lord's emphasizing it to me. You know, the Bible talks about being in Christ and Christ in us. We think, well, which one is it? Are we in Christ or is he in us? Now, if I had a bucket of water here and I had a, a little jar, empty jar, and I put the jar in the bucket of water, 
Is the water in the bucket or is it in the jar? Is the jar in the bucket or is the water <laughs> in the jar? They're both the same. Now, if let me just demonstrate something. Then I promise I close. See, here the Lord is, right? I'm serious. Here the Lord is, right here. Now, I'm over here. And the secret place is in him. He is the secret place. Now, if I smell right, if my character aligns with him, and there is a combat compatibility to between characters, I can do this. I can walk over here and I can step into him. Now I'm in him at that point in time. There is a covering. It took me a long time to understand this and I'm telling you in one minute. I can walk out of him, I can walk in him. It's all a matter of awareness. The secret place of the Most High. He is in me, yes, I have his DNA within me. But he's also with you as well as in you. And I can step into him. And the more you become, this, this leads to a whole new level of relationship and walk with the Lord. Sorry, Lord. This, this, can, it, this is where you can become invisible in him. All kinds of other things open up if you will learn. If you are afraid, anything that's happening, your char if your character is compatible with him, you can step into him and be at rest. Paul talks about this in Christ, being in him and he in us. And it's, this is a dimension and a realm where God wants to take us. You know, Paul said, when I am, David said, when I am afraid of him. David said, I put the Lord always before me. He said, my right hand, left hand, right hand. How did he do that? It's Old Testament. How did he put the Lord before him? He said, he put the Lord before him. Simple. Just like you did put the Lord before him, me here. That's how all he did. He said, now I can go into battle because the Lord is with me. Awareness. 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 When I came up onto the platform tonight, I said to the Lord, right, I'm not going unless you come with me and I know you're coming with me. So I said, let's go. And he comes. Simple as that. It is 6.35 right on the dot. God bless you. Hallelujah. All our prophets have been talking about character. God is so concerned about our character. And what is that character? God desires that we become like Him in His image, in His likeness, in His very nature, in His very character. God is holy. He wants us also to be holy. The Bible says, Be holy, for I am holy. Uh, because God is raising a bride in each and every one of us. Amen? Amen. So we're all 
bridal candidates here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, why does you know the Bible says that it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Amen. The Father wants to give us His kingdom. Amen. And we are to reign with Jesus Christ forever and ever, for eternity. Amen. God wants to entrust His kingdom to us. And before God, you know, for God is going to give us glory. And part of that glory is God is going to confer not only His kingdom upon us, but God is going to confer upon us His authority. But we must, be, we must have the character to be able to handle that authority in the way that God would handle that authority. Amen? That's why character is important. So today, one of the characters that the Lord is looking, up, looking into our hearts is how much do we trust God? How much do we trust God? No. Because giving, giving our, bringing our tithes and giving our offerings is, is a question of trust. Amen? The tithes, it belongs to God. It, that, that's not ours. Agree? So we have to be faithful tithers. Agree? And God is looking at us in, if we are faithful tithers because that's part of our character. Amen? Uh, so He expects each and every one of us that we are faithful tithers. Uh, because God will always... You know, that is God's share. The tithes are God's share. Now, we are to give offering. What is the offering? The offering is what is on top of the tithes. No. The offering is a seed. That as we plant a seed, in due time, we will, we will harvest. As, as we sow, shall we reap. The law of sowing and reaping. Amen? So, the Feast of Tabernacle is a time wherein it is also called the Feast of Harvest. The Feast of the Ingathering of Harvest. Uh, and it is a time for us to harvest. You know, I personally felt this in my spirit in these last few months. The Lord has, the, the season of God has changed. It's time for us to, to, to harvest. Before, it's, it is as if a mirat magnigosyo, plowing the field is so hard. But now, parang nagbago na yung ano eh, nagbago na yung business environment, nagbago na yung, nagbago na yung economic environment, nagbago na yung spiritual environment, no? God's favor is is coming our way. And I am reminded of Joel chapter 2. I'd like to read it to you. No? I'm reminded of Joel chapter 2, verse 24 to 27. Let's read that verse. No? The threshing floor shall be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, the great locusts and the young locusts, the other locusts and the, lo the, the locusts swarm, my great army that I have sent among you. And you will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked work wonders for you. Never again will my people be put to shame. Last verse. Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be put to shame. So, it's a time of harvest. 
the Feast of Tabernacles. And what is God doing? God is rebuking the locust, the devourer. He's going to repay us all the years that the enemy has been plundering us. It's repayment time. Do you believe that? Ibabalik. Ibabalik sa atin lahat yung ninako ng kaaway. And yung balik na yan, it, it is dependent on how much we have sown in the past and how much we are continuing to sow, to sow in the present. Amen? It depends on if we have been if we have been a faithful tither, and it depends if we, we have been sowing. If we have been sowing much, we are going to reap much. Sowing and reaping. If we sow, if we sow little, we will only reap little. No, but there will be multiplication. If we sow abundantly, we will reap abundantly. Okay. So. Let's remember these two principles of tithing and sowing. We have to be faithful tithers. Amen? And I'd like to tell you a short story, you know. I was reading the old messages of Neville last April. And I came across his message on offerings. For many years, I've been a faithful tither. But last April, I read his message and offering and offerings are not the same as tithes because offerings is free will what is on top of the tithes the tithes that belongs to God eh? Hindi atin yun. You know? and I was convicted because of the principle of sowing and reaping you know? if we want to reap a lot we have to sow a lot as well you know? so when I was convicted I called all my accountants including my personal accountant and I told them retroactive January you know you add 10% the companies will will type 10% more and everything that I earn we will type 10% more on top of sorry we will give a 10% offering on top of the tithes no. so no. so you know, 10% tithes, 10% offering, 20% plus 30% taxes. 50%. Uh, but it's, it was more than a conviction. Eh. Because in my heart, in my heart, the Lord somehow moved in my heart that I trust God enough. That God is faithful. You know that as we tithe and obey, and as we give offering, no, God will, God knows, and He knows, and He knows, and it will all a harvest will come. There will be harvest. Amen. So let's pray. Let's pray. Father God and our Lord Jesus. Forgive us. Forgive us that we have not been faithful in our tithing. Give us the grace to trust you. That we will give from this day forward, we will give our full tithes. And Father God, from this day forward, we will give more than our tithes. We will be lavish in, in giving our offerings. Touch us right now. Touch us with your love. Because it is your desire as a father to bless your children. It is your desire as a father to entrust us your authority. It is your desire as a father to entrust us your kingdom but you will only entrust it to your sons and daughters who has your character. We pray, Father God, lavish us with your love. 
that we, that perfect love casts out fear, that we will not be afraid. We will not be afraid of poverty. We will not be afraid of lack. We will not be afraid of the devourer. Because we know that we know that we know in our hearts that you love us. And if we love, and if you love us, we can then love you in return and love others in return. And we can become a generous giver, a lavish giver. So today, Father, Raise us, raise us up that character in us to be faithful titers and lavish givers. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Some short announcement po before we take our dinner break. For those who have cars, doon po sa may mga sasakyan, pakicheck lang po na hindi po ninyo nabablock yung mga sasakyan ng ibang hindi umaattend sa ating conference. Pakiayos lang po ang inyong pagpapark. Again, I repeat po, ah, uh, so, October 3 po ang ating Pastors and Leaders Prophetic Conference. 
ang ticket po ay available sa table. Ito po ay kay Bruce Allen, kay Dr. Bruce Allen, Gazing into Glory. Please, please be back at 7.30. Mag-start po. Mid 7.30 ang atin pong next session. God bless you and take a dinner break. God bless.